Good morning, everyone. It's time for another daily devotion. Uh, today, I am going to read a uh, scripture passage that, that I like a lot. It reminds me on one of the reasons that I am so thankful to be a child of God and a part of Jesus's family. Uh, it is Hebrews chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles, and let us run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. For the joy that set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him who endured such opposition from sinners so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. Uh, well, we are in the midst of Holy Week. Uh, it is my favorite time in the church. I like it even more than Easter. And one of my favorite uh, parts of it is Monday Thursday, which is tomorrow night where we remember the Lord's Supper. And the reason that I wanted to talk about that today, I'll probably talk about it tomorrow too, just a hint. But when we start talking about this great cloud of witnesses, it is truly, truly one of the things that I am most grateful to God for. Uh, the Lord's Supper has been going along, going around for over 2,000 years. Uh, it looks different in different denominations and traditions. Uh, people uh, say different words in different languages. Um, but every time we celebrate the Lord's Supper, we are feasting not only with Jesus the Christ and with the triune God, but also with everyone that's a part of that cloud of witnesses. It's every person who has been called by faith to Jesus Christ since the first apostles. Everyone who worships God joins us at the table when we have the bread and the juice. That is so cool. Every single Christian who has come before us, every Christian who is alive today, and everyone who will follow Jesus in the future are all feasting with us at the table. Uh, it also makes me think of one of my other favorite parts of a church service, which is our statement of faith, where I, uh, at least that's what we Presbyterians call it. Uh, for the most part, I like us to, to say the Apostles' Creed or the Nicene Creed, but other, uh, but people use other ones as well, but especially those two. Uh, the Apostles' Creed, uh, the very beginning of it, goes all the way back to the Apostles. It's been added to since. It's been tweaked a little bit since, all the way up until the fourth, uh, fifth or sixth century. But the original words of the Apostles' Creed goes back all the way to the Apostles. And it is believed that part of the Apostles' Creed has been said uh, was what was said during baptisms. It was the welcoming of people into the church. And the Nicene Creed was the first statement that truly gave guidelines on what Christians uh, should believe. And that goes all the way back into the 300 ADs. So on one hand, for the last 2,000 years, and for the other one, the last 1,700 years, people have made been making these statements that we are followers of Jesus. And I love that. I love thinking the fact that when I stand up there on Sunday morning and I say the Apostles' Creed or when I say the Nicene Creed, every person who has ever said it before is saying it right along with me. And every person who will ever say it in the future is saying it along with me right there. And we are becoming the body of Christ. We are showing our unity and we are showing that we are not alone. Right now, I think that is so important. Uh, we're not alone. Uh, even if we are stuck in our homes or our apartments, even if we're missing worship, we're not alone. The cloud of witnesses, the body of Christ is surrounding us. We have both God with us and all of our Christian family is with us. We are not alone. Uh, if you are feeling alone, I can understand that. I've felt lonely quite a few times, uh, and I think all of us probably are. 
Uh, and this is an opportunity that we can uh, uh, really put that cloud of witnesses uh, into work because we can call each other. We can say prayers for each other. We can reach out to people. If we're feeling lonely, we can reach out to people. If we think others might be feeling lonely, we get to reach out to them. And just remind that we are the family of Christ and we will never be alone. Uh, Lord, uh, let's, pr let's pray. Holy Lord, thank you for your gift of the cloud of witnesses. Thank you that we are a part of a family that goes back thousands of years and will continue until you call us all home. And then that family will continue for all eternity. Lord, thank you that even when we feel alone, we're not alone. Even when we're feeling lonely, we are not by ourselves. For you are with us, and all of your children are with us. Thank you. Amen.